You may have noticed that when we launched our game, it opened in quite a small window. Now would be a good time to change this by making some adjustments to our project settings. Click on the project menu at the top left and go to project settings. This window can be quite confusing as it allows us to configure a ton of different things within our game. For now though, we're only focused on changing the size of our game window when it launches. To do this, find the window section under the display label on the left hand side and click on it. In the right hand side panel, we're going to change the viewport width to 1920 and the viewport height to 1080. Note that if you're using a monitor that has a resolution smaller than 1080p, you'll have to choose a smaller width and height here. Underneath the stretch section, we're going to change the mode to viewport. This ensures that if the user resizes the game window, our game will scale appropriately. With those options configured, click on the close button to go back to the main editor window. Before we begin creating the game, we're going to need to import the various art and sound assets. You should have downloaded the zip file for these already, but if not, then make sure to download them from the video description below. Inside the Godot editor, right click on the root folder inside the file system panel and click open in file manager. This will open your project folder in your operating systems file browser. Now extract the contents of the asset zip file into your projects folder. Once done, return to the Godot editor and you'll see that the assets have been imported. With that done, we're now ready to start creating our Raptor Run game. The first thing our game will need is a way to allow us to visualize the game world. For that, we're going to need a camera. With our main scene open, come up to the scene panel, right click on our world node and select add child node. From the create new node dialog, expand the node 2D item, choose camera 2D and click create. You'll now see the camera node has been added to our scene as a child of the world node. For the most part, we're going to use this camera node as is. However, there are a couple of small tweaks we'll make over in the inspector. The first thing we need to do is tick the checkbox next to the current property. This will ensure that this camera is used to render our game. Secondly, we're going to want to zoom in on the action within our game. So we'll set a zoom value of 1.5 on both the X and Y axis. When doing this, you'll notice that the purple rectangle that indicates the camera's view changes size. This purple rectangle gives us a visual indication of which parts of our game will be visible depending on our camera's position at any given time. We want our game to have a background image visible at all times. We can achieve this easily by adding a child node to our camera. Because child node transforms are always relative to their parents' transform, it means that whenever the camera moves, the background image will move with it, which is perfect for our needs. As we did before, right click on the camera 2D node and choose add child node. This time we're looking for a sprite 2D. Instead of expanding the various parent nodes to hunt for it, let's search for it by typing sprite in the search box at the top of the dialog. You'll see two options, animated sprite 2D and sprite 2D. Since our background image will be static, we'll choose sprite 2D and click create. With our sprite added, right click on it in the scene panel and let's give it a more meaningful name. We'll call it background. Another useful tip is that you can also rename nodes by simply clicking on the node's name again when it's selected. To add our background image to this sprite node, first make sure you have the node selected and then come down to the file system panel. Expand the assets folder and inside you'll find a folder called sprites. Expanding this, you'll find a folder called background. This is where we'll find our background image. Drag the file called backgroundstatic.png over to where it says empty next to the texture property in the inspector. You should now see our background image displayed in the camera's view. Let's make sure that we have everything configured correctly by clicking the play button at the top right of the interface or hitting F5 on your keyboard. The game will now open and we can see that our background image is displaying at the correct size in our window. If we resize the window, we can see that the background image scales appropriately with black bars appearing when the aspect ratio changes. This means our scaling configuration is working as expected. Before our raptor character can be brought into this lush prehistoric jungle, we're going to need to give them something to stand on, so it's time to add a platform. Let's create a new node 2D in our scene and call it environment. We'll use this node as a way to organize our scene as it grows in complexity. This node will contain various things such as our moving platforms and the ground. To differentiate between the static ground and our moving platforms, let's also create two new child nodes of type node 2D underneath the environment node. 
we'll call the first one static, and the second we'll call moving. This will make a little more sense later on as we start to make our platforms move. OK, now it's time to create our first platform. Add a new child node to our moving node. This time, it will be of type static body 2D. It will be static because rather than move the platform directly, we'll later move the entire moving node instead. Rename this node to platform. You'll notice a small yellow warning triangle appear next to this node. Hovering the mouse over it shows a warning that says this node has no shape and that we should add a collision shape 2D as a child node. We will do just that, but first, let's add our platform image so that we know what size we need to make our collision shape afterwards. Add a sprite 2D node as a child of our platform, and as we did before with our background image, we'll drag the appropriate image to the texture property. We can find the image under the Assets, Sprites, Platform folder. Great, now we can see our platform in our viewport. Now that we can see how big it is, we can go ahead and add our Collision Shape 2D node. Make sure to add it as a child of the platform, not the Sprite 2D. Again, we'll use the search box to quickly find it by typing Collision and choosing Collision Shape 2D. Again, you'll notice a yellow warning triangle. Hover over it and you'll see that it says we need to create a shape resource for it. Over in the inspector, click the drop down arrow next to the shape property and choose new rectangle shape. Clicking where it says rectangle shape will reveal a configurable size X and size Y value. Enter a value of 380 for the X and 40 for the Y. You'll see the transparent collision box reflect the change in the viewport. You'll also notice that this transparent box has resize handles. You can use these to change the size of the collision shape if you ever find it easier than entering values directly. For now, let's stick to setting the values explicitly in the inspector. You may notice that the collision shape doesn't perfectly line up with where we would actually want collisions to occur with our platform. It's too low. We can easily fix this by expanding the transform section and modifying the Y value. Let's give it a value of negative 20 to move it up a little. This won't move it right to the top of our platform image, but don't worry, we don't actually want the collision shape to go right to the top, because we want it to look like our raptor is standing on the grass, not hovering above the platform. We're almost done with our platform, in fact, we're not going to make any further changes to this one. But before we move on, I want to discuss the concept of physics layers. In Godot's physics engine, it's possible to define which nodes can collide with each other through the use of physics layers and masks. In brief, every physics object within our game can exist on one or more layers, and these objects can in turn interact with objects that exist within those layers. Which layers an object exists in, and can interact with, can be defined on a per object basis using the collision layer and collision mask properties. By defining these properties appropriately, we can ensure that our objects collide with only the things we want them to. For example, we may only want our player to collide with the ground, while our enemies will need to collide with both the ground and the player's projectiles. Select the platform node, and in the inspector expand the collision section. We can see two properties here, the layer and the mask. A node can exist in multiple physics layers at once, as defined by which layer numbers are selected in the layer property. Which layers a given node can detect collisions with can be defined by the mask property. In this instance, our platform node exists in physics layer 1, and can only detect collisions with other nodes that also exist in physics layer 1. For now, let's make life a little easier for future us. We can do this by giving our physics layers names that make sense in the context of our game. Come up to the project menu and choose project settings. On the left, scroll down until you see layer names and choose 2D physics. This dialog allows us to define our own names for each of the 32 available physics layers. For Raptor Run, we're going to define three. These are environment, which we'll use for layer one, player, which we'll use for layer two, and enemy, which will be layer 3. With our layer names defined, close the window, select the platform node again, and over in the inspector, hover over layer 1 under the collision layer property. You'll see now that it says environment. This will come in handy later when we start to define our collision relationships between objects, such as our player's projectile and enemies.
Before we move on, let's make our platform a reusable part of our game by turning it into a scene. We can do this by right-clicking on the platform node in the scene panel and choosing Save Branch as Scene. Doing this brings up the Save New Scene dialog. Let's call it platform.tscn and save it inside the scenes folder. Immediately, you'll see that our Sprite 2D and Collision Shape 2D nodes have disappeared from the scene panel, and the platform node now has a little movie clip icon next to it. This means that this node is a scene rather than a single node. We can open the platform scene directly by clicking on the movie clip icon. Doing so, we'll open the platform scene in a new tab, and now we can see our platform in isolation, along with the sprite and collision shape nodes. This makes changing elements in our game a breeze, as we can simply make changes in one place and have that change reflected in every instance of that element across our entire game. Very useful. Let's go back to the main scene now by selecting the main tab at the top of the editor. Next, we'll begin adding our player character.